Hi, I'm Joth Hunt. I'm one of the members of the Southern Counties Regional Team and it's my privilege this week to bring our greetings, the greetings from Colin, from Claire, from Dave, from Amy, from Alison and Andrea. And we pray and hope that uh, you are well and God is blessing you at this time. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for this season to come to end when Covid will be over and we'll be able to join together once again. Waiting is something I don't find easy and I, I'm not sure about you but I certainly don't find it easy at all. But I don't think it's within the British culture to wait. Although we're renowned for queuing, we don't really like waiting. Just went down to the shop the other day and saw a queue and I decided it was quicker and better and easier to just walk to the next shop uh, rather than to queue. But we're in a season of waiting. Covid has brought us to that place of waiting. And actually Christians shouldn't be surprised by a season of waiting. In fact, actually in scripture, in the Bible, we find a number of occasions when people have to wait. Noah had to wait. Abraham had to wait. Moses had to wait. David had to wait. Isaiah, Jeremiah all had to wait. Israel had to wait. In fact, actually, there are seasons and times and moments of waiting. And the Bible encourages us to wait. There is something very precious and spiritual about the period and the time of waiting. Psalm 27 puts it like this, Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. And Isaiah writes, Blessed are the ones who wait for him. And even Micah chips in, But as for me, I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait for God, my Saviour, my God, will hear me. We're in that season as well where we remember that Jesus ascended to his Father and the disciples were encouraged to go into a period of waiting, waiting for the Holy Spirit. And so I just want to read some of those verses to you from Acts chapter 1 where Jesus tells them to wait. Luke writes this, I wrote to you about Jesus and all that he taught until the day he was taken up from heaven after giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. And on one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which, I, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. The disciples were encouraged to wait on the gift of the Holy Spirit that will be sent from Jesus a season of waiting. So what can we learn? What can we learn about this spiritual discipline, this spiritual moment when we enter a period of waiting? I'm still waiting. I'm waiting for that Saturday morning when I can go down to Eastleigh and join with several hundred other runners to run through the Eastleigh Park. It's called the Park Run. You can't rush time. In this waiting season, one of the key attributes that we need to learn, that we can learn in this moment, is the attribute, the spiritual attribute of patience. Many of us are not patient people. I'm not a very patient person. Often I want things quickly and I want them now. But actually scripture teaches us that actually in this season of waiting, it's about learning to be people of faith who trust God in patience. It's interesting that throughout scripture it holds these two things together, the season of waiting and the spiritual attribute of patience. David talks about it in his psalm, Psalm 37. He says, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. 
And Paul also writes in Romans, he says, but if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. And James in his book says, be patient, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's come in. And then he goes on to talk about the illustration of a farmer who sows their seed and then waits patiently for the seed to grow. Many of us are very impatient people. We want things to happen straight away. But in this season of waiting, we can learn more about what it is to be patient. Being patient means putting aside our agenda, putting aside our will, putting aside our time scale and saying to God, this is about your agenda. This is about your will and this is about your timing. That we are going to entrust our future into your care. And actually, you know, this season is outside of our control. So we look to God. It's a good opportunity to look to God and say, God, teach us what it is to be people of faith who are patient. Because patience is about entrusting our future into his care and saying we trust God in the journey that is before us. May we learn in this season of waiting the precious In fact, actually the fourth characteristic of the fruit of the Spirit, may we learn that deep sense of what it is to be patient people in our Lord. I'm waiting, still waiting. I'm waiting for that moment when I can see my parents again and I can go and give my mum a big hug because that's what she needs at this moment in time. But during this waiting period, there are opportunities. The waiting season doesn't mean that we have to be passive. It doesn't mean that we need to be lazy or just sit around doing nothing. It gives us an opportunity to be active in areas perhaps that we're not very good at being active in. And prayer is one of those areas. I'm interested that in Acts 1 we read that the disciples gather together and the one thing that they particularly do is constantly pray. I think in this season of COVID, the church and Christians are learning a deeper sense of prayer. It's really encouraging that in this country, in the United Kingdom, that Baptists Together have been meeting through YouTube to pray twice a week. And I know churches have had prayer meetings via Zoom and and, and other means, and they've been really well attended, much better attended than uh, prayer meetings in the past. So during this period of waiting, this season, if we are learning more about prayer, that's going to be a wonderful and fantastic thing. The waiting season gives the church, gives Christians the opportunity to spend more time with God in conversation with him, to express the thoughts of our hearts, to express the thoughts of our minds and our souls, to to confess to him, to, to intercede on behalf of our nations and our world and our countries to intercede particularly for those that are suffering in this COVID period. But also, most importantly, to hear. To stop in the rush of life and to give God the opportunity to speak to us. So often when we're rushing from one thing to the other, I sometimes wonder whether God thinks, I can't get a word in edgeways. And yet when a waiting season comes... It gives God space for us to be still and for him to be able to speak. So this waiting season is a great opportunity for us to deepen our sense of prayer and hearing from God. Yep, I'm still here waiting. I'm waiting for that moment when church right around the world will be able to gather again together to worship and to give praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. But this waiting period will come to an end. The waiting season is not the end game. The waiting season is a period of preparation where God might prepare us ready for the season of sending. Jesus said to his disciples, to wait for the Holy Spirit. But he also said, when the Spirit comes on you, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the world. This period, this time of waiting for the Holy Spirit 
will come to an end. The Spirit will be poured out onto the disciples and they will be sent into the world. That preparation for the sending is taking place. I had the real privilege uh, just a few weeks ago, in fact, actually, to join a service in Guernsey. Uh, I did it via Zoom, by video conferencing. Um, and the speaker on that occasion was a gentleman called Paul Leboutier. And Paul shared with us the period of occupation when he was a child of Guernsey by the Nazis. And the one thing that he remembers particularly is how hungry they were. In fact, actually, 400 people starved in Guernsey during those years of occupation. But Paul said that actually, although this was a terrible thing, that experience prepared him. The waiting under occupation prepared him for the sending in his life. And Paul went on to work with the Billy Graham Association. And he worked particularly in Africa, but also in India as well. And when they went on missions, he was the one who often stayed behind and worked with some of the social projects that were available to them. And he had the opportunity to feed many starving children. And he said that every time he saw a hungry child, he, were, he knew exactly what it was to be hungry. And he empathised and sympathised with that child even more. And it motivated him to keep up the work for a good 20 years. When we're in a season, a moment of waiting, God is preparing He's teaching us, he's preparing us for the sending season. May we have humble hearts, humble lives that allow God to do a great work in us so that we are ready and prepared to be sent when the waiting ends. I want to end uh, by praying with you and I want to use a prayer by a lady called Debbie Prodosky. Uh, and it's a lovely prayer that is a prayer for the waiting season. And then I want to finish with some words from Psalm 130. Lord, I thank you that you will answer my prayers in your perfect timing. Reveal what is in my heart and make me ready to handle the answer in the right way when it comes. Help me to pray by faith consistently and long term, to believe, wait, and then move forward in your timing. Help me to be patient in prayer, not to give up, but to trust, to trust you even during the moments when I feel negative or impatient. I don't want to live by my feelings, but I want to live by faith. Help me not to take matters into my own hands. I choose to trust you and I refuse to believe in the lies of the enemy. I choose to be faithful in prayer, deepening my understanding and giving me a greater knowledge of what you are doing in my life. I choose to hold unswervingly to the hope that I profess. Stretch my faith in the midst of the wait just as you did with your disciples. I thank you and you that you have all the wisdom and will answer my prayers in the perfect way. In Jesus' name, Amen. And then these words from Psalm 130. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord, more than watchmen wait for the morning, more than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. Praise be to God. Amen.